How to better complete projects successfully? And that's an important question because those who do earn more than the trust from their clients alone. My name is Jan van and in this video you learn to prepare for your primary planning. Before you start planning you first need to know your project. And the biggest mistakes are made even before you begin. So that's the whole point. This video is about how to identify what your stakeholders want and whether you should do it all in one project. And for that you learn some basic but not so obvious planning principles. And a wrong decision in this stage can cause that you totally lose control over your project later on. In the previous video you learned that you need to have enough people and your people need to have enough time to get all the work done and they need to collaborate and align their work. And these are the two basic needs for project success. These are the two strategies for, to survive in projects. And you learn that the primary planning is all about that. So let's get started. We start with the initiation stage. An initiation stage is about finding out the outline of your project. It's the why and the what of the project. And that's not so difficult. Just talk with people and gather information. Your most important concern, however, is the availability of your stakeholders. The biggest risk in this stage is that your stakeholders are not available or dedicated to give their input. Because of that, you might fix the wrong problem. Because of that, you might start the wrong project. Also their problem, the problem of your stakeholders is they don't have enough time for all their work. They might believe that planning activities are less urgent than the crisis that come in the end game of projects. But they are wrong. The biggest problems and the biggest failures are created in the initiation stage of the project. And it is your job that you fight for their availability and dedication to brief you and to share their insights. You can do it. So when do you meet your stakeholders? When you meet them, let them do the talking. And these are the questions that you could ask them. What is their situation? What is their concern? How is your project going to affect them? What if your project isn't going through? What do they want? But what is within the scope of your project and what is outside the scope of your project? What is the outline of the deliverables? How do they see their role? Do they have any recommendations? Just ask these questions, think about other questions yourself. Ask them the questions, let them do the talking and you get lots of valuable information. Once you have better understanding of the project, you have to think whether you must divide your project into smaller projects, yes or no. Reasons to divide a project into smaller projects is when you don't have a good idea about how to do the project from start to finish. Just to illustrate the point, let's think about the project of an old friend of mine, Bas Lansdorp, who wants to build a community on Mars. You might have heard about it. He wants to build a community on Mars for the people who decide to live and to work on Mars for the rest of their life. Well, quite an intriguing project. At the beginning of such a project, is it possible to give a due date? Is it possible to build a network of all the tasks for the whole project? And have you any idea how long it will take, how much effort that will take? Probably not. Well, if you don't, then you have to break up your project into smaller projects, of which you do have a good idea. And of course, this also applies for more Earth-like projects. The other reason to break up your project into smaller projects is when you don't have control over the progress and the timing of the tasks. For example, when a client has to confirm certain stages or to give approval, and the client takes their own time to confirm, and you don't have any control over when they do that and when they will be ready, then you must break up the project. You can think of many situations like this. Then break it up in smaller projects, of which you do have control. The core principle behind this is everything that has been started must continuously progress. That means that your team must continuously work on the tasks of the critical path and it also applies to the tasks. Tasks that has been started must continuously be worked on to get the task finished. If you know upfront that the project will be interrupted or it is likely that it comes to a halt, then either don't start a project yet and wait till you know that it can be finished in one go, or fix any obstacles before you're starting, or break up the project into smaller projects which you can control. This is what I like to share about the initiation stage. Approach your stakeholders and gather information about why and what of the project. Let them do the talking. And divide projects in sub-projects if you have no idea 
how to do the project from start to finish, or when you expect that the project is likely to be interrupted and will come to an halt. In this video you learn to prepare for your planning, to identify what your stakeholders want, and whether you should do it all in one project. In the next video you're going to learn one of the most important and powerful project management tools there is, and that also applies for the primary planning. And it's the work breakdown structure. Thanks for watching. See you next time.